You see, what God wants to do with, with the prophetic house and with the body of Christ in this season is not to eradicate false prophets. God does not want to eradicate false prophets. No matter how, how, how much I preach, the aim of the Lord is not to eradicate false prophets. God wants to cause a distinction between his house and the false house. Anyone who sees in the spirit and who knows the plans of God can go and test this thing I've said in prayer. God's current emphasis with his body and with the prophetic house is to cause a clear distinction. That's all he wants to do. This is why he's calling his prophets to a different way, down to the way we dress, down to the way we present ourselves, to cause a visible, clear distinction between those that are of his house and those that are of the false house. And that clear distinction is going to put a sword in each man's hand. And the one who has chosen to stand with God will perpetually be against the house that has chosen to come against God. That's all God wants to do. So if you truly want to walk in the ordinances of ministry from God's perspective, especially in this end time, when the world is saying marry, you will say divide. Meanwhile, Satan's plan for the end time is to marry. This thing I'm telling you, the Lord showed me by spirit. The Bible says in the end of days, they will marry and what? Be given into marriage. That's what Satan wants to do. Satan's grand plan for the end time is to marry the people. Make them become one. Make the old house and the, and, the, and the new house to become one. Make the old wine and the new wine to become one. Make the new wine skin and the old wine skin to become one. It's marry. They shall marry and then be given into marriage. Meanwhile, God's plan, what he's coming to do is that he's coming to bring a sword. How come Jesus is bringing a sword? Then you are saying marry. Have you not read the parable of the, the ten virgins? At midnight, at the junction between the old and the new, a call rang out. The bride cometh. Let those who are prepared go and meet him. From that point, they were together. They, they were together in the journey, together in slumbering. They all backslid, including us preaching today. At some point, we all were one. That's what that scripture is trying to tell you. But because you had extra oil and you were wise, when it matters the most, even though you were foolish before that time, when it mattered the most, something gave you wisdom to stand up and trim your lamp. So indeed, the first will become last. last. When it matters the most, many who were running well, they will fall. Don't fall at the wrong time, sir. And don't be down at the right time. I told you something. I say, when God calls and says, who shall I send? Who shall go for us? He's not looking for a prayer warrior. He's not looking for a one who is prayerless. He's looking for anyone who says, here am I, send me. Because even though you were formerly prayerless, there's enough coal of fire from his throne to make you what he wants you to become so that you can represent him accurately in that assignment. So what distinguished prophets in the day God wants to send his messenger is the one that could hear the sermon. Remember I told you people three years ago, Solomon, I said now God wants to begin to introduce the, the prophetic house. Let's begin to trim our lamp. I told you guys. And then we went on intensive prayer, weeping. We are not the most prayerless, but anyone who made himself available, the Lord will cast his burden upon that person. So when he matters the most, a division happened immediately. Five were separated and five were left behind. So the strategy of God in the end time is to cause a distinction. Have you not read scripture? He said two will be walking, one will be taken, one will be left behind. Two sleeping, one thing. What he's trying to tell you is that in that day, the master will come and separate the people. So even in the prophetic, there is a type of minister. There are types of prophets that seem to be like the antagonists of the whole people. They are the ones crying. Why do you think that the Bible said Elijah and Enoch, the two witnesses that will come in the end of days, they would be given power to, to spit fire out of their mouth as a defense mechanism against attack? It is because the kind of witness that they will bring will cause many to seek their life. So many are falling at the wrong time. Many are still on the ground at the right time. So the Lord is not saying marry. The Lord is saying separate. He said, do not think I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword that will cause father to go against son. Son against father. That's what we're seeing today. Children against parents and parents against children. That's what we're seeing today. When that sword of the word of God comes, yes, you love your spiritual father, but you say, no, sir, you are fake. You'll be termed as rebellious. No, sir, this is not the way of God. Your spiritual father loves you, but we say, no, son, <laughs> you've become fake. I cannot stand with you. That's what the sword will do. I'm telling you a message that is without emotion. I'm telling you the truth of God's word so that we can all go and labor and look for Jesus. It's a season of separation. God is causing a clear distinction. 
You see, one of the ways God speaks without saying anything, Pastor Nelson, is that he will cause his signs to speak. And only the wise will be able to hear the voice of God from the signs of God. So all of a sudden, you will hear that so-so mega church collapse. It's a sign. Hi, it's not an accident. The old house is falling. Can't you read the sign? Can't you read the sign? There are many things God is saying in the end of days. Go and read Revelations. You discover that God spoke more with signs towards the end of days. Star we fall. This will happen. He signs for the wise, for those who have understanding. Because the trumpet is already sounding. The trumpet is a meant for the children of God. The trumpet is not necessarily an occasion, a celestial occasion. The trumpet are the signs that will be unsealed for the believers so that they can know when the master is closed at the door and then their rejoicing can be complete. So the signs are not for the unbelievers because the unbelievers will never hear the trumpet. You see, when you read prophetic text, don't read it from a human perspective. Trust the Holy Ghost to give you the interpretation of the prophetic text. The trumpet that sounded in heaven followed with an, an occasion on earth. What sounded in heaven followed? So it means if you want to know what is sounding in heaven, look at what is happening on earth. This trumpet sounded. This thing happened on earth. God will never leave a true Christian to be caught on our ways. Never. He said, take it that no man deceive you. Any believer surprised at the coming of the Lord was never waiting for him. The believers waiting for the Lord are not surprised at his coming because before he comes, they will hear the announcements in the signs that, that are, oh my God. So anyone that cannot trim his lamp after he has seen the sign is marked for destruction. Meanwhile, in the days of the sign, there will be great foolishness in the earth. So people will see the sign and ignore it. That's why I say something. I say even if Jesus tells you the day is coming, there are some people that will still miss rapture. If he tells you that I'm going to come 6 p.m. or 6 a.m., there are some people whose wickedness will continue. Jesus, you don't know how wicked man is. So the trumpet sounding is a prophetic language to tell you that when we get to this point, when heaven gets to this point, this is how you are going to know on earth. Heaven has gotten to that point. So you who is watching and praying, you will not be, you will not be taken on our Never be taken on our How can you be taken on our ways? Yeshua said the day and the hour, no man knows. He didn't say the season. Yes, men we know the season. He didn't say the year. He said the day and hour. That's what he said. Is that not what he said? But he gave them the season, the signs of the end of the age. So you will know the season in which that day and hour will take place. 